Okay, we are going to get started. Um, today, I'm going to show you how you can actually recreate a forward contract synthetically using a stock and a bone. Okay, that's the very uh, basic. And that's really so like uh, the first thing we want to know how to do uh, before we can move on to construct more complicated arbitrage. Okay. Creating a four word. Okay, so I'm gonna start and uh, make up some numbers here. We're gonna start with a stock, the price at t equals zero, s zero is equal to hundred dollars. Okay, make that number nice and easy. The interest rate. So that's the rate of return on a risk-free security is R, it's going to be equal to 5%. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to go ahead and include a dividend rate. That's the rate at which uh, the uh, stock is going to grow in value because it pays out dividend. We're going to make that a little bit bigger at 10%. Okay, now. Uh, so let's just go ahead and describe what is a forward contract. Forward contract, we're going to take the long side. You receive the stock at maturity T. That's hopefully bigger than, bigger than zero here. And you pay the forward price that you have agreed to at t equals zero. Okay, so how does that look on paper? On paper, uh, we're gonna go ahead and say long the forward contract. Well, on paper, what's special about forward contract is that you don't spend any money right now. Okay, so here there's really zero dollar between the person who's selling you the Ford and yourself. And all of the action is going to happen at t equal cap t, where in case you're going to receive the stock, which is the same thing as receiving something that is valued as cap t, right? That's the value of the stock at maturity. And then you're going to make a payment. Okay, you're going to make a payment. That's the Ford price. What's the forward price again? Well, we have seen in class that we actually can figure out what the forward price is because that's a, you know, that's something we agree on at t equals zero. So we should have all the elements and we saw that that forward price is something like S naught times exponential R minus delta cap T. Okay. So that's in our case something that's 100 times exponential 0 0.05 minus 0 0.10. And I'm going to take t of one year here. Yeah, precise this t. Oh, sorry about that. t equal one year. Just keep numbers nice and easy. Okay, so 100 times this, times 1, and so that's equal to 100 times exponential minus 0 0.05. Okay, so crunch your calculators, and then uh, you'll be, you should be able to find this number uh, fairly easily. That numbers, let me just try to uh, do this real quick. Uh, here, my computer and that number is turned out to be $95.1. Okay, so long forward is a contract where at t equals zero, just draw a line here, you spend zero dollars and at t equal 
one, it's cap T if you want. You receive the stock, one unit of the stock, and you pay, in our case, $95.1. Okay, so now we've defined, so like our problem, question is like, can we actually replicate this? Uh, can we make sure that we built a forward contract uh, by using a stock and a bond? Okay, so I'm going to get started with a stock. And usually, you know, you see that uh, when you buy a forward, you're going to receive one unit of the stock here at cap T. So what's another way of uh, getting one unit of the stock at cap T? Well, you could just buy the stock today and, you know, carry it forward, holding it in your pocket or in your portfolio until the uh, maturity. Uh, that's called the carry strategy, and then you'll have the stock uh, at maturity. Okay, so that sounds like maybe a good start of emulating the forward. So let's go long the stock. What's the cost of going long the stock? Well, you need to buy the stock. You don't have it with you. Okay, so today at t equals zero, buying the stock costs you whatever the stock is quoted on the stock market. So that's like here, $100. Now, what's going on at maturity? So at maturity, uh, I would like to think that you have actually one unit of the stock, and now that stock has some value. And that value, you know, I don't, I cannot give you a numbers because right now I actually don't know what's the price of the S&P 500 is going to be in a year from now. I have no idea. Uh, but I know that I'll have one unit of the S&P 500. There's just one thing here that I've abstracted from is the fact that we actually do not account for those dividends, right? So when you buy the stock, you have a claim to all of the future dividend of that stock. That means that you're going to enjoy some benefits of holding the stock in your portfolio. Okay. How do we transcribe those benefits in uh, the class with continuous compounded dividends? That means that if you have one unit of the stock here, one unit of the stock today, you're going to have one times the growth rate, exponential delta cap T units of the stock and not one. Okay, so you have one times number of units that you bought times the growth rate, uh, the stock and the value of that is still S cap T. Okay, so now if I recap, if you have, you spend, you buy one unit for $100, you're going to end up at T equal cap T, oops, T equal cap T, you're going to end up with exponential delta cap T times S cap T in experience. But that doesn't work. Remember, we're trying to emulate the forward. And the forward is just one unit. How can I just make sure that I have one unit next period? How can I make sure that this number is one? Well, to do that, I could actually adjust my position at the beginning of the period by just a little bit less of the stock so that I ex actually ex exactly have one unit uh, at the end of the period. So I'm going to do one more step. So I'm going to say, let's buy a fraction of the stock today. That's going to cost me a little less, of course, because I don't need to buy a full stock, such that next period, I'm going to have the number of units that I purchased times the growth rate times the value of each unit. And that's, of course, going to be equal to one unit times the value of the stock. Okay, so what will, that's called shortening our position. Okay, so if I want to put some numbers on this, what's going to happen, so long, short, tailed, position in the stock, it's going to be minus one over exponential delta cap T S naught, which is minus hundred dollars the price of one unit of a stock but i buy less than one unit i buy this 
and then next period I'm gonna have plus one as cap t, right? Because I have this stuff with me. I can do whatever I want with it. Okay, so let's put some uh, numbers on this. So that's going to be equal to uh, basically that's gonna cost me not hundred dollars but ninety point uh, close to ninety point five US dollars here. Okay, so now let me just recap what we have done. We have a forward that's zero today and then one unit of the stock minus roughly uh, a cost of $95, right? If I remember correctly from here, 95.1. And now I've said, well, maybe we can approximate this by going longer stock, which is spend $90 today. And then I've shown you that this gives you exactly one unit of the stock. Okay, if you compare those two, well, for the forward, the payment in US dollar happens at time cap T. For the stock, the payment happens today. So I need somehow, if I really want this to be like a forward, I want somehow to move the payment from today to the next period. How can I make sure that I don't pay today, but I pay later? Well, I use credit, right? If you don't want to pay something up front, you're going to take a credit. What does it mean to take credit? Well, I'm going to borrow money against the risk-free rate. Okay, so say so we're going to borrow. So how much am I going to borrow? Well, if I need to spend $90.5, I'm going to borrow $90.5. That sounds convenient. Now, if I borrow money, how much am I going to have to repay in a year from now? Well, I'm going to have to repay my principal plus interest. It's continuous compounding. Just multiply it by the continuous compounded rate. Okay? So that's minus 90.5 times exponential 0 0.05. Which happens to be equal to minus 95.1. Okay, and now let me recap for one last time, see what we have done. Ford, still here. T equals zero. T equal T. Zero. S cap T minus 95.1. And then we have said long stock and then borrow. At the same time, we said plus 90, uh, sorry, minus, of course, we spend money to buy the stock. And then we receive exactly one unit of the stock and then borrow, so 90.1. And that means we have to repay next period, like something close to 95.1. Okay, so if I sum those two here, I have zero. And then the payment of S cap T minus 95.1. Okay, and then the lesson here is that basically by going longer stock and borrowing money, I was able to replicate here the payoff of simply going long a forward. And what this teaches you is basically how to implement this cash and carry strategy that replicates a forward on the one hand, but also to understand that a forward is really a levered position in the stock. You borrow money to buy the stock. Okay, well, this is all uh, for today. Thanks for uh, listening, and I look forward to your uh, comment.